this screencast is on the foreign exchange market. And in this screencast, we're going to look at the labeling for the foreign exchange market graph, the determinants that affect the foreign exchange market that cause the shifts in demand and supply, and also what it means for a currency to appreciate and depreciate. So the first thing that I want to talk about here is the labeling of the foreign exchange market. Um, this is really important. A lot of students will get this wrong on the AP exam. And so if you can um, label this correctly, this will put you ahead of a lot of people. So when we're talking about the foreign exchange market, we're talking about the exchange rate of currency between two countries. In this case here, I have the U.S. and the EU. So we're looking at the dollar and the euro market. And so let's take a look at the United States first. On the horizontal axis, you've got the quantity of the U.S. dollars. And many times, instead of writing out U.S. dollar, they'll have USD. Over on the vertical axis, and this is where people get things wrong, you need to label it with all of this. So we're talking about the exchange rate. And what we're looking at is the relationship or the price of a euro per U.S. dollar. Now for me, what I do in order to remember this is that whatever is on the horizontal axis is my denominator. And so that's how I'm able then to remember is the price of euro per U.S. dollar. You have an upward sloping supply curve and it's the supply of the dollars that the euro market is looking for. And then you have the downward sloping demand curve for the demand for the dollars. Um, quantity, the Q is fine, and then a lowercase e for the exchange rate. Now, what we need to remember when we're looking at this is that in order to, for a foreign country to buy something in the United States, they have to use the dollars. Because we're not part of the EU and we don't use the euro, we cannot buy things in that market without exchanging our dollar for their currency. So you have to exchange the currencies in order to buy goods in a different country. And so then again, when we're looking at the labeling that goes on here for the euro market, same thing, downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve. You've got your quantity of euros over here. And then because this is the horizontal axis, it has to be in the denominator. So we're looking at the exchange rate, the price of US dollars per euro. So now let's take a look at the things that would shift those supply and demand curves. The four determinants are taste and preferences, and really we're talking about do people want to spend things in another country because of tourism. The other thing is price level. So think about the ADAS model um, where we're talking about that price level. People's income, and also the last one would be the interest rates that you have with the financial institutions in the banks that real interest rate or sometimes known as the prime interest rate. So first let's look at, take a look here at tourism. And in this case here, we're looking again at that euro market. And so for the United States, they're on the horizontal axis. So remember that you've got US dollars here in the denominator when we're looking at the exchange rate, the price of euro per US dollar. In this situation here, we have an increase in the demand for the dollar. So that means that people from Japan, from Europe, sorry, are wanting to buy things in the United States. So they have to supply their currency in order to demand the dollars to be able to buy our goods. So one of the things to remember is that an increase in demand for one country as an increase in the supply for another country. Now, I will say that you could have said for this, instead of do doing increase in demand, which is causing the increase in the supply, you could have said a decrease in the supply of dollar market, because now there aren't as many dollars that we're using, um, which leads to a decrease in the demand of the European market because they're not utilizing their euros. Um, I'm somebody who, the way I teach it, 
is that when I talk about buying in a particular country, I talk about the increasing of the demand. But just so you know, it is acceptable to talk about it either way. You just got to make sure that the exchange rate here is going in the right direction when you're doing it. So again, in, in the Europeans are going to buy things in the United States, and so there's an increase in the demand for it. Now what this means when you have an increase in the exchange rate is that you have an appreciation of the dollar. When there's an appreciation of the dollar, there's a few things that you need to think about. First off, you could think about the exchange rate. And one of the things to note here is that the way that you look at this is that originally, before when you had the original supply and demand of the dollar, it meant that for every dollar, you could buy 1.4 euros. But now, because of this increase in the demand for the dollar, which is increasing the exchange rate, you can get 1.5 euros for every dollar. The reason that this happened is because there was an increase in the demand for the dollar. Another way of saying that the dollar appreciates is to say that we have a stronger dollar. And basically what this means is that now, because of that, we have the ability to buy more of another country's goods. Because if I had a dollar, I could only buy 1.4 worth of goods, but now I can buy 1.5. So technically, I could buy more of something. When one country appreciates in their currency, that means that the other country depreciates. And so in this case here, they're supplying their euros to be able to demand our dollars. And that is going to cause a decrease in the exchange rate. And what that means for them is that for every euro, originally when it was the 1.4 euros for every dollar, for every euro they could get 71 cents. But now because of the depreciation, they can only get 67 cents for every euro that um, they're paying. So when they convert, they're not going to get as much of our money. This is caused from an increase in the supply of that currency. Um, another way of saying that the euro depreciates is to say that they have a weaker currency. Um, you can also say here, th though, that because their euro has depreciated, one of the good things for them is that their goods are cheaper relative to the other country. And so that will cause an increase in net exports because everybody or in the United States will be like, well, now I can get more euros for my dollar, so things are cheaper over here. So as a result, I'm going to want to buy more in the euro market. It's not necessarily a bad thing that the euro depreciates. You know, I think people think, oh, my currency is weaker, that's bad. Not really, because that means then that the goods are cheaper, which is going to increase their net exports, which, as we know, increases aggregate demand. Another determinant is the price level, again, the ADAS model. And so when you have an increase in the price level, that means that you have inflation. And so if Japan, where they use the yen, if that experiences inflation, that means then that its goods are more expensive. And so Japan will want to buy things now in the United States because things are more expensive in their own country. So they will supply their currency in order to demand our dollar to buy our goods. And so what that would mean is that imports increase in Japan because they're buying more of our goods. You could also say that exports increase in the U.S., but on test questions, a lot of times, they'll be wanting to focus on one country. And so if they're saying that the country's prices are more expensive, well, what happens in that country? And so their imports increase um, is usually how it's stated on tests. Another determinant are people's incomes. And so one of the things that you have to accept here is that when people's incomes increase, they're not only going to spend more at home, right, because we know our C would go up in the AD model where our consumption, but not only do they spend more at home, they spend more in other countries. That's an assumption that goes with it. And so if we have more income, 
and then we that means we'll buy more in another country so we'll increase the demand for that country's currency to buy their goods now if we're in a recessionary gap you need to think about what that means about people's income and people's incomes are low and if people's incomes are low well then they will uh, decrease their demand for another country's currency because they will not be wanting to buy elsewhere. One of the things the government does in order to help out with the recessionary gap is that they utilize deficit spending. So if you see questions about deficit spending and the impact that it has on the foreign exchange market, well, you need to think about how that will increase our consumption, which will cause um, an increase in another country's in the demand for another country's currency. Um, that goes back. Also, you could think about too. We'll talk about in the next slide um, the impact that it would have from deficit spending. When you think about crowding out, right? That real interest rate rises, and so that's something else that they could ask that would also um, talk about. The other thing that they will talk about is the interest rate. And when a country has an increase in their interest rate, the impact that it will have. And it all relates back to the financial asset market, where we're talking about banks. If our interest rate goes up, that means the rate of return is higher. And so other countries, if our interest rate is higher than theirs, then they'll want to invest in our banks because they can get a higher rate of return. And in order to put their money in our banks, they have to convert their currency over to our dollar. And so the demand for the dollars will go up if our interest rate has gone up because that will be a better place to invest their money. And that's what I mean about how it can come back to um, crowding out. With deficit spending, there's an increase in the real interest rate. And if you have an increase in the real interest rate, then you're going to have other countries in, increase their um, investment in our financial asset market, and they will demand our dollars when we have deficit spending. 